So I was out in the shop trying to think of what I should make for my first Tools of Autumn build. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, I really need a setup gauge for the table saw. I started designing one, but then I decided I might just follow the pros in on this one and I bought some plans from woodsmith.com. There's a link in the description below if you want to have this for yourself. The first step was gathering everything that I'd need. I had some aluminium straps, a thread insert and bolts, a six inch steel ruler and a rare earth magnet. And finally, some nice Brazilian walnut. I know, exotic wood, look at me. I bought this board and a couple other ones around five years ago and man, did I overpay. So much so that I've held onto these and I've refused to use them for any project time and time again. But that's silly. Holding onto these for longer isn't gonna make them better value, but creating something useful from them will make them better value. So I'm finally biting the bullet and I'm gonna use some of this walnut for my setup gauge. After prepping it, I ended up with a clean, if not overly attractive length of walnut. I cut that down to size on the table saw to get the two parts needed for the body. I'm still trying to increase my quality of work, so I used a black marker here to clearly mark out all the cuts that I was going to have to make. There are two main parts to this tool, the bigger body and then the smaller arm. Before I can cut them down to size though, I have to remove a little bit of material. That's this glowing area here, simply because the walnut had remnants of a knot in this area and I don't like the way the grain flows on the edge. It'll be easier to cut it away rather than work with it. Now the two pieces will eventually slide against each other like this. The arm will have a tongue along one edge sliding in a groove on the side of the body. I made both of those features on the table saw, cutting very slowly and making sure that I only took off a tiny bit each time. I really didn't want to go too far, ruin the wood and have to start over. Both pieces have an L shape to them. I figured that the cleanest way to get that curve would be by using the force a bit. And while I was at the drill press, I also made a shallow hole to accept a rare earth magnet, and that's gonna eventually hold the steel ruler in place. One thing I wasn't prepared for was just how long it was going to take to clean it all up. I probably spent close to three hours filing and sanding, trying to get the shape that I was after. I'll spare you the full pain, but you have to have a filing montage at least.
And after spending so much time with it in my hands, I realized that the groove needed a little bit of work and also that I'd left the arm a little bit too long, so I chopped that shorter. I wanted to insert a thread in the main body so that I could lock the sliding arm into it. I carefully drilled that out and then inserted the thread as a test. Turns out that the hole wasn't quite deep enough, but when I tried to back the thread insert out again, I started hearing some really scary cracking sounds. Because I'm a bit of a chicken, I decided to just leave it be and I decided to file it flat. The arm needs a slot for that locking bolt to pass through. I made a bunch of holes on the drill press using a brad point bit and then used chisels and files to flatten both walls. And that was the bulk of the woodworking done, so now I got to play around with a little bit of metal, something I very rarely do. I'm using aluminium here for my metal choice, although the plans actually call for brass. I'm using aluminium for no reason other than I haven't made anything like this before, so as a bit of a test project, it makes sense to go with the cheaper product. I need wider pieces running along the bottom. They're gonna be the wear strips and they'll give a nice solid surface to register blades against. And then a skinnier piece running up the arm and that's gonna help the ruler sit against. I cut my pieces slightly oversized on the table saw. Though of course, if you have a saw stop, make sure you don't do that. And then glued them to the wood. Hey, guess what? More filing. It took some time to get them flush with the wood, but there was nothing super hard about it. Just lots and lots of filing and sanding and filing and sanding. Also, the glue's not gonna hold forever, so I drilled out some holes for screws, inserted them, and sanded them flush as well. I guess boiled linseed oil is the finish of choice for hand tools, so that's what I used here. Two coats of that, and then I glued the magnet in place as well. And here's the finished product. I am really, really happy with it. I think it looks great, and it's gonna be useful around the shop. If you don't know what it's for, it's to help with height and depth adjustments on different tools. First I set the height that I want and I tighten the knob down. Now I can take it over to the table saw and raise the blade up until it touches that metal base and that will give me a nice clear stop. It's also useful at the router table, especially when trying to measure the height of awkwardly shaped bits. And because the ruler is attached via a magnet, you can even use it as a depth gauge, helping to check how deep a mortise is, for example. So I'm still on my skill up journey to try and become a quality woodworker. I spent the better part of the past year trying to actively improve my skills in joinery, sharpening, box making and other areas. And now this is the first video in what's gonna become my Tools of Autumn series, where I make a bunch of tools through autumn. Subscribe and ring the bell to see what comes next.